Hey guys, welcome to your second set of videos for <clears throat> Laboratory for 224. Today we're going to be going over Lab 10, that's the anatomy of the heart. You guys are looking at the two models we primarily use for the heart for testing, quizzing you guys. We're going to mostly stick with this one today. It's a little more clear and defined, you can see a lot more structures on it. So we're just going to focus on this for now. <clears throat> we're going to be going over a couple things, don't forget just a quick little reminder, we're not going to be going over every single term in this section. Some of those have been left on purpose for you to discover on your own or find in your PowerPoints. Some of these are going to be picture only anyway, so it works out that way. But we're going to take a second and start with the layers of the heart. So there's three layers of the heart, the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Epicardium is the outermost layer. So if you ever see us point to any just kind of generic part of the outside of the heart and say name this layer, we're talking about the epicardium. Also it could be referred to as the visceral pericardium. Uh, those are synonymous terms, so either or is going to be totally okay. Looking on the inside, you can see this red strip right here that looks like it has a little white line running through it. This layer is going to be the myocardium. That's the middle layer of the heart. <clears throat> and then on the inside, if we ever just kind of point generically to the inside of an atrium or a ventricle and say name this layer, that's going to be the endocardium. That's the innermost layer of the heart. So now we're going to talk about the route of blood to and from the heart. Starting over here, we're looking at the right side of the heart. We have the superior and inferior vena cava. Those are going to carry deoxygenated blood from your systemic circuit and are going to dump it into the right atrium. That's this chamber right here. So blood's going to enter the right atrium, will eventually flow into the right ventricle by going through this valve right here. This valve is going to be the right atrioventricular valve or the tricuspid valve. So deoxygenated blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. will eventually enter the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary semilunar valve. You can see there's two little marshmallow looking structures right here. That's going to be the pulmonary semilunar valve that allows blood to enter the pulmonary trunk and eventually flow into the pulmonary arteries. <clears throat> the pulmonary arteries are kind of interesting. It's one of the few exceptions in the body where an artery is actually going to be carrying deoxygenated blood. It's carrying that deoxygenated blood to the lungs where the blood will pick up some oxygen that we breathe in and then send it back to the heart through the pulmonary veins, which you can see examples of here and then over here as well. So, blood is going to come back from the lungs. It is now oxygenated. We'll go into the left atrium from the pulmonary veins. Blood then fills up in the left atrium. We'll get dumped into the left ventricle going through this valve. It's going to be the left atrioventricular valve or the bicuspid valve. Either one of those terms is totally fine for your quizzes and practicals. So blood enters the left ventricle, which, fun fact, is the biggest chamber of the heart. It's the most muscular. We'll then enter the aorta going through the aortic semilunar valve. So you can kind of see the start of it right there. There's two more marshmallow-looking structures back in there. That's going to be the aortic semilunar valve. Blood then comes up through the ascending aorta, through the aortic arch, and then we'll dive down into the descending aorta. So that's the route of blood to and from the heart. We're going to get a little bit into the external anatomy of the heart and the coronary blood supply. But just so you know, this is going to be the sections where we skip a couple terms. We're going to leave some for you to discover on your own with your TADA or some lab mates. First, we're going to talk about the auricles. The right and left auricles are these little flaps that are covering each of those atria. So in my hand, we have the right auricle. And over here covering the left atrium, we have the left auricle, which is just this orange flap right here. 
We're gonna skip the sulci. I'm pretty confident you guys can figure those out on your own. Just know that a sulci is gonna be tested as a groove. So you might remember that from 223, sulcus, sulci, plural, is gonna be tested as grooves. Next, what we're gonna talk about is the fossa ovalis. When you open the right atrium, you guys can see there's a little white dot in the back right here, that is gonna be the fossa ovalis. Uh, the reason we want you guys to know this term is because it's super important. When a heart is developing, <clears throat> when you're an embryo, there's a, kind of some differences in the root of blood flow because of the umbilical arteries and veins, so this is just a consequence of embryological development of the heart, that fossa ovalis. Next is gonna be the pectinate muscles. The pectinate muscles are these little grooves and ridges that are on the insides of those auricles. So you would find those exclusively here. Next what we're gonna talk about is the chordae tendine and the papillary muscles. So pay really close attention here. <clears throat> the chordae tendine are gonna be all these white lines that are connected to that valve, they are connected to the inside of the heart through specific muscles called the papillary muscles. So make sure you guys don't get that confused with like the pectinate muscles. Pectinate muscles are the ridges on the insides of the auricles. Papillary muscles connect the chordae tendine to the inside of the heart wall. And then the next term we're gonna go over is the trabeculae carne. Uh, make sure you guys are uh, really careful on this one. I usually tell my students it's just those structures, those little cheese holes on the inside of the heart. That is a structure, so this is a good point to note where if we're testing you right here and we say name this structure, we're talking about the trabeculae carne, but if we point to this and say name this layer, that's going to be the endocardium. So make sure you're always double checking those to make sure you don't get those confused. <clears throat> and then next, we're going to talk very briefly about the blood supply. There's only a couple things I really want you guys to know. First of which, we're going to go over it, is the left coronary artery. This one is almost always most missed on my practicals and quizzes, so I want to make sure I go over this with you guys. Right here you can see this little red strip that kind of looks like it's dipping up in between the auricle and the pulmonary trunk. That's going to be the left coronary artery. And then another couple I want to go over with you guys back here is the posterior and middle cardiac vein. It's very confusing. Right here just below the inferior vena cava is going to be the middle cardiac vein. And then coming over here is going to be the posterior cardiac vein. So those two terms are very, very frequently confused for students, so just make sure you know the middle one is going to be just below that inferior vena cava and the posterior one is going to be over here on the side. The rest of the coronary blood supply we're going to have you guys look in lab on your own so make sure you ask your TA for help if you need anything and good luck on your quizzes guys.